Did you know that right now, as you're watching this video, our planet is undergoing a climate crisis of unprecedented magnitude? We're rapidly changing the Earth's climate by releasing a staggering 1,400 tons of carbon into the atmosphere every single minute. To combat climate change, many are turning to trees as a key solution. Trees, along with other plants and algae, have been naturally removing and storing carbon for over 370 million years, surpassing the efficiency and cost-effectiveness of human technologies. But can trees actually make a big enough difference in cleaning up our mess? What if we could undo climate change by planting trillions of trees? Before we get into that, let's start with the basics. How do trees actually capture carbon dioxide, or CO2? Trees have skillfully evolved to use the energy of sunlight to convert carbon dioxide in the atmosphere into sugars and oxygen. That's how they remove CO2 from the atmosphere. The trees keep the C from the CO2 and return the O2 to the air we breathe. The trees use this carbon to build up their leaves, branches, and bark. Forests around the world actively absorb a whopping 2.4 gigatons of CO2 every single year. To put it into perspective, that's approximately 7% of the total CO2 emissions for the entire year of 2019. But here's where things get fascinating. If we were to plant 1.7 trillion trees, we could remove a staggering 3 billion tons of atmospheric carbon each year. That's about 10% of what we emit annually. Despite the great potential for young trees to absorb CO2, it's essential to understand that planting trees alone won't completely solve the issue of global warming. In fact, estimates paint a bleak reality. There's not enough space on Earth to plant the number of trees it would take to prevent the climate from warming by 2 degrees Celsius. A 2 degrees Celsius increase would be devastating, increasing the risk of wildfires, droughts, and extreme storms. To plant 1 trillion trees, we would need an area equivalent to the size of the contiguous United States. That area covers half the land used for crops worldwide, plus the land we'll eventually farm as populations grow. In other words, many of us would starve if we tried this. Moreover, it is important to remember that most of the carbon stored will eventually be re-emitted. Remember, trees are basically big carbon storage machines that suck CO2 out of the atmosphere and turn it into more trees. Cutting those trees down and either burning them or letting them decompose just puts that carbon back in the atmosphere. Most deforestation happens in Earth's tropical regions. If this tropical deforestation were a country, it would be the third biggest emitter of carbon in the world, after China and the US. Almost one-third of all the world's carbon emissions since 1850 have come from deforestation. These days, forests remove about a quarter of the CO2 humans emit into the atmosphere each year and store it away. There is more carbon locked up in the world's trees than all the fossil fuels still remaining in the ground. And beyond carbon, tropical forests act sort of like the planet's air conditioning. They pull moisture out of the ground, release water vapor into the sky, and literally create rain and weather patterns across the globe. Cutting down these tropical forests can raise nearby temperatures by as much as 3 degrees Celsius. Therefore, planting trees is only part of the solution. It is always best to protect existing forests first. This is because they absorb carbon better and are more resistant to droughts, fires, and storms. But that doesn't mean planting a trillion trees doesn't work. Planting that many trees wouldn't solve the problem, but it would be a huge help. We used to have roughly 6 trillion trees on Earth before humans started cutting them down. Now, we have about half of that remaining. Ideally, we'd want to return to the 6 trillion, but of course, we need space for our settlements and agriculture. But we can get about another 1 trillion back. While it wouldn't solve the climate crisis on its own, it does make it possible to ensure that the global temperature does not rise by more than 2 degrees. And if we manage to plant these trees, they would capture about a quarter of human-made CO2 emissions. Don't forget, tree planting is, well, it's complicated. 
Have you ever thought about how more trees might cause heating by absorbing extra sunlight, or the complex interactions between different gases in the atmosphere and the gases released by different types of trees? What's also especially important is that governments and organizations plant these trees properly. But what do we mean properly? Planting only one species of tree in a given area, also known as a monoculture, can create ecological dead zones with limited biodiversity and therefore weak ecosystems. It's also important to use species that will be more resilient to climate change, as well as planting a variety of species to mimic the diversity of natural forests. Similarly, if we plant trees in places that are not their natural habitat, they could become invasive. These non-native tree species can have catastrophic consequences on local habitats. The new trees could end up taking resources away from native trees and plants, again reducing local biodiversity and even altering entire ecosystems. All right, if you were to remember one thing from this video, it might be this. Simply planting trees will not be enough to solve climate change in the long term. To do that, we need to reduce our CO2 emissions to zero. For videos on how this could be done, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and stay tuned.